producer Joe here from the Working Fans Podcast. And at the Working Fans Podcast, this is just a podcast that three lifelong fans created to have a place to talk comedy and pro wrestling. Now, our comedy podcast releases every Tuesday, while our wrestling podcast releases every Thursday. We release bonus episodes under the moniker Working Fans Presents every now and then. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, any major podcast provider. The important thing is just please like, rate, review, subscribe wherever you listen to us. Now, we have started a new thing. We are now on Amazon and Audible. So those episodes release every Monday. And that's kind of going through the archives and just releasing our old episodes in a new area. So if you want to live through the process with us again, take that journey with us again. You can find us over on Amazon and Audible. Now, if you can't get enough of us in the audio form, check out our YouTube. It's youtube.com slash C slash Working Fans Wrestling Pod, or just search Working Fans Podcast on YouTube. We have the, the whole archive is up there. And if you listen to the Working Fans Podcast, you are more than familiar with the 531. That is our signature segment where we take your top five list on a particular subject, vote it down to a top three, and then debate it down to a top one. Now, guys, if you want to hear three guys talk shit about comedy, wrestling, life, anything, you will enjoy the Working Fans Podcast. Fans, welcome back for Working Fans Comedy Cast, episode 39. We are doing a 5-3-1 on Ben Stiller movies. Next week, November 16th, we will be bringing you episode 40 with a 5-3-1 on Chappelle Show sketches. Now, episode 41, that comes out on November 23rd. That's Thanksgiving week, and we got a Thanksgiving surprise for you. November 30th, we are rounding out the month with episode 42, a 531 on top holiday movies of all t- holiday comedy movies of all time. Now let me play the intro real quick. I'll bring in the man they call Dave and we will get to talking about top Ben Stiller movies. Dave, we are back in the saddle again. Episode 38, or no, 39 of the comedy cast. Excuse mm. me. I don't know how I got them confused. Oh, man. Rounding in on 40, baby. Here we go. Putting that work in, clapping them cheeks, giving all these people something to smile about when they uh, open up their ears and listen to this podcast. Bye-bye. Now, you got a good amount of Ben Stiller responses, right? Like, Ben Stiller was, I think, one of our, one of our more passionate responses from people. Um, yeah, I got some responses. Uh, hold on. Let me pull out my ass here real quick. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know what? Um, I think the pro- like, we would have even got more. Like, I got an all right amount of responses, but um, I think, uh, you know, Joe's been running around like a marathon, too, so... It was always just my responses this week, and I'm not throwing Joe to the bus. But to be fair, like I Joe built this up. Like hey, we got a lot of responses. We got so got like a lot of ten here. Hold on. We got some. I, I'm dressing <laughs> it up because actually, currently, as you listen to this this week, I am in the woods of Maine. We are recording these in advance to kind of cover for my vacation, and Ben Stiller movies. It's not that we're phoning it in today. No. This is just the last thing on the end of our list. And we wanted to fit it in because we wanted to stay ahead of the game. We enjoy bringing you guys quality content. So even though we don't have a lot of lists, there's going to be a lot of interaction there between is. me and I'm, Dave. And we're going to want to hear from you in the comments as well. Yeah, and I, I'm excited to do this one. So let me just start off. We got Carrie, your friend till the end, on Twitter, who wrote Dodgeball, Tropic Thunder, 
Zoolander, Meet the Parents, and Mystery Men. Um, Dodgeball, for me, uh, one of the great things I love about this movie is the uh, cameo with Chuck Norris, where uh, he ends up being one of the judges. And Ben Stewart is just great in this movie. You know, the whole picture of himself on the wall fighting the bull. And he's like, that really happened, by the way. You know, that whole thing, you know, like, you know, and the girl's like, and I think that might be Ben's actual wife, where she's like, uh, Ron, how did you find out where I live? And he's like, it's called the Freedom of Information Act. <laughs> Look it up. The hippies finally got something right. Like, it's just so perfect. It's so over the top obnoxious. And then when he's fat at the end and overweight and he's just pissed off and he's like, oh, you kids want a little Easter egg? And he's like shaking his man, tits it around. He's like, don't you wish your girlfriend? And, you know, and he's like, fuck you, Chuck Norris. Like, the whole thing, it's a fantastic movie. I feel like Plus, that came out at the height of his popularity of movies, too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Vince Vaughn is kind of like his asshole, like, charming self in this movie as well, too, where he's kind of a smart ass and doing some stuff. And, you know, um, what's his name here? Justin Long is kind of just hitting his stride when he hits his movies. So uh, just after Creepers, Jeepers Creepers, he had popped in this one, too. So it's kind of interesting. I remember him, like, he's washing the car and, they're like, doing that charity car wash. And, like, how are we doing with the car wash? Like, that's so good. And you just see this guy with a gut playing with his belly button looking at Justin Long. He's like, yeah, get under the tires, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Any, uh, little, let me hit you with another list, and we'll get some feedback from you as well. Meet uh, the Parents was another good one, too. Meet the Parents is a great one. Um, that was one of the ones I think that really kind of, uh, you know, you know my, like, took Ben Stiller's career to the next level, actually. Uh, yeah, because he was doing comedies before that, but then he was able to branch out. And he became part of a franchise with that. Meet the parents, meet the Fockers. Yeah. And God, yeah, that took him to like the next level of stardom, I feel like. Okay, Lord Fokker. All right. Uh, Scott from Voluntown. There's something about Mary. Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. Happy Gilmore. The Royal Tenenbaums. Tropic Thunder. And he said, if the roles in Anchorman and Happy Gilmore were too small to qualify, I'd swap them out for Meet the Parents and Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Um, I think uh, the little part where he's an anchorman, where he's one of the fighting newsmen, this is absolutely great. Him and Happy Gilmore, where he's giving the old lady a hard time, and he's, like, shushing her, you know, and threatening her. Yeah. Like, he's such an asshole, but he's so, he's so funny at this stuff. Um, uh, there's something Tropic about Mary Thunder. that was like his first breakout comedy, like one of the early ones where it's like, all right, this guy is going places. Another fairly brothers movie. Just hilarious. Trump, uh, yeah. That one with the hair gel was obviously super famous, uh, where he gets his balls and dick cut in the zipper. Uh, mm. all good shit. Uh, the hair, hair gel. Scene. This is good stuff, baby. Good stuff. Uh, I got Zach St. John. He's got Meet the Parents, Zoolander, Heavyweights, Royal Tenenbaums, and Indy. I'll throw Zoolander out there. Um, one of my favorite scenes is when he's doing the eulogy, eulogy after his friends accidentally uh, set himself on fire with a gasoline fight. <laughs> like He was like, we died in a tragic gasoline fight. <laughs> like These guys are like dancing and throwing gasoline on each other and someone goes to smoke. <clears throat> and he's like doing the eulogy and he's like, I consider them like brothers, but not like blood brothers, but like how black people say brothers because I find that way more meaningful. <laughs> like It's just such a hilarious, silly line. And but for some reason, it's very relatable. And I was like, yeah, you know, I would have to say that like the people I call my brothers like are actually my friends. <laughs> so I like, you know what? I get it. <laughs> Now, what are the lists you got for us today? I know you got some more on deck there. Yeah, we got Randy Oska. He's got Meet the Parent, Zoolander, Dodgeball, A True Underdog Story. Uh, there's something about Mary, Night at the Museum, and The Watch. Nice. Night at the Museum. That was like we were talking about where he was getting those mainstream <coughs> family comedies a lot more. Hmm. Wasn't Robin Williams in that film too? Yeah, I believe he played Teddy Roosevelt. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You know, good stuff. Um, I now, got, before, uh, before we go on to the next list, we got to say it's almost a given that Ben Stiller would be as funny an actor as he is. 
being the son of Jerry Stiller, who played George Costanza's dad on Seinfeld. Mm, so, good. you know, not necessarily the same type of humor, but I have to feel that growing up in show business and being around comedy, you get that inherent rhythm to it. Yes, I like that they had that. He's great in Seinfeld. I remember he had the Man's Ear episode or the bro, you know, that bra for men. Yeah, such good stuff. Jerry Seinfeld was just awesome in that. Um, Jerry Stiller, uh, Jerry Stiller, excuse me. Yeah, Jerry Stiller on Seinfeld. Um, I was like, Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld was great in Seinfeld, Dave. That's why they named him. (laughs) What's with all these people? Um, (laughs) I got I got Michael Flynn, he's got a list. (laughs) Surprise, motherfucker. I do a Jerry Seinfeld. (laughs) Um, he's got Tropic Thunder, Zoolander. Dodgeball, heavyweights, and the Royal Tenon Bombs. Uh, I don't remember much about the Royal Tenon Bombs. I kind of do. Like, Me do neither. That? But uh, that's another one like Zoolander where I wouldn't expect it to m- hit people's top five list. But that's what we get when we ask these questions. You you get a lot of the responses you expect and then some that it's like, ooh, I wouldn't have thought of that. Good pick. Mm. Uh, I got one more than myself. Uh, and maybe think of a list there too. You know, Maybe you got a list here. <laughs> um, I wouldn't even be so. able to AJ that. I mean, I'll I'll give you I'll give you a partial list. We'll finish with the partial list. All right. Uh we got Jesse from New Hampshire. The guy contributes so much. Uh he's got Dodgeball, Starsky and Hutch, Along Came Polly, Meet the Parent slash Fockers, and The Watch. The Watch. What was that? That was, I believe they were a neighborhood watch them, oh, or they were yeah. like a security group something like that yes 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 i did not see that one it's got vince vaughn the heavy set kid from um uh that high school movie there yeah yeah whatever fuck them <laughs> <laughs> i got my own list here uh something about mary me and jesse actually uh are kind of clicking on this one. Along came Polly, Starsky and Hutch, Tropic Thunder, and Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Uh, so along came Polly. Um, one of my uh, favorite scenes in this movie was the first time, um, oh, what's his name? Philip Seymour Hoffman talked about how he sharted. And that was the first time I ever heard that expression. And he's like, what? He's like, I farted and a little shit came out. We got to go. Like he just sells it so well. Hoffman's also has this scene in the elevator where he's just stretching and there's a bunch of people and he's like, ah, I'm horny. You know? and it was just, it was just such a thing that he's like, he's at the basketball courts playing with people, missing every shot. And he's like, why thunder? <laughs> <laughs> like Hoffman is great at that. And also there's another scene I can really relate to where he's having sex with Jennifer Anderson for the first time. And he's about to like, you know, climax like in the first 10 seconds. But for some reason, he's like, oh shit, just get to 50. And he's counting in his head. And fellas, I've done this. I don't really give a shit. And he said, that, and he just yells, finally goes, 50. And she goes, yeah, 50. Yay. <laughs> it's just a great scene. Um, Starsky and Hutch. I love that movie. Um, if you um, listen to, uh, I think it's in Along Came Polly where Alec Baldwin's character um, is talking to him about his wife leaving him. He's got that accent where he's like, the woman was a whore. You're glad you left her. You know, he ends up doing a similar role in Starsky and Hush for this scene where he pretends to be like this big Texas cowboy. You know, if you listen to it and you watch that scene from Starsky and Hush, it's Alec Baldwin's character in Along Came Polly. So it was just one of those things that I always thought was very funny. Um, you know, Vince Vaughn, Snoop Dogg. I always remember Snoop Dogg as like a little mobster, Huggy Bear, and everybody's coming to him for like help. And there was this little like convenience store guy who's like, they won't leave my store, Huggy. And he's like, don't worry, man. Those people that bother you, they will not bother you anymore. Now be gone, little Indian man. And he's like, thank you, Huggy Bear. <laughs> it's just like, it's such a funny thing. I'm sorry about my poor Indian accent, but I just... I love that movie. I love that scene. So good stuff. Now I'll bring you my list. I got dodgeball. Yes. I had to include Starsky and Hutch. I thought it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Something about Mary, obviously up there. 
Tropic yeah. Thunder. We talk all the time on the show about how we enjoy Tropic Thunder. And I had to run it out with the Long Came Polly. Long Came Polly, great films. And also another great scene in that Starsky Nuts too was when Ben Stewart was all hyped up on cocaine. And he's like playing music. And he actually they actually play the animated blue birds that are like flying around and stuff. And uh I think he ends up passing out and Owen Wilson sleeps with like both chicks. But uh anyway, all good films. Um God, what do you think were the final three here? I feel uh, Dodgeball was film. up there. Something yeah. about Mary, obviously up there. Yeah, I would say. And then I think it was kind of Meet the Parents, actually. Totally yeah, was. Meet the Parents. I I would have to give it to Meet the Parents, yeah. Yeah, I would. Um, so Meet the Parents was a great film. Kind of It was funny. Out. I mean, it spawned that whole set of yeah, movies. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, but for me, it's just not Dodgeball. It's not Dodgeball. It's not something about Mary. Uh, honestly, another film that I thought was you know, is not Tropic Thunder. Simple Jack. <laughs> yeah. That's just great, great stuff. And uh, Robert Downey Jr. telling him, he's like, you can't go full retard. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr.'s words, folks, don't get mad at me. I didn't write this shit. <laughs> but, you know, it's just. Uh, yeah, we were calling good- those helmet headed kids, or special needs motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's yeah, that dude talking yeah. the wall for? Uh, I got to. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my Uncle Pedro. I love you, buddy. Um, you know, Uncle Pedro's been catching it on the show lately. <laughs> Uncle Pedro, Pedro was catching a lot of stuff in his life, man. You don't know about Uncle Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> He's smooth as silk, baby. <laughs> so, uh, something about Mary and um, shit. I distracted Dodge myself. Ball. Dodgeball. Yeah, those are, uh, to me, something about Mary was the first one that really kind of like, you know, just killed it those Fari films but um i'm a big dodgeball fan i think it's a sleeper i think most people would probably say something about mary though should probably win this that would be my pick but like what's your what's your case for dodgeball over something about mary because like fairly movies the fairly brothers they made dumb and dumber Hmm. outside providence a lot of really good comedies around that time yeah about dodgeball though you know, I think it's just I like the cast of characters. Like, I like Justin Long's character. I like Vince Vaughn. I like the Steve the Pirate character. They're like, go back to Treasure Island. <laughs> they throw, like, a milkshake at this guy. I mean, it's just a funny film with a lot of silliness to it. Um, who's that guy that, uh, is it Rip, uh, Rip Torn? Yeah. Yeah, he's in there, and he's like their like guy that's like you know like their leader, and he's their inspiration. And then a big sign just like falls on his head and kills him. <laughs> like it's, it's a silly, it's a silly movie. Um, I don't know. I'm a big fan of it, but again, I think you're kind of right. And I think you know sometimes when you're doing these lists, you can have your personal favorites, but you have to realize too and step aside, like. What are the people's favorites? And I think it's probably something about Mary. I think that film just hit a little more, and it's probably Ben Stiller's best work. Yeah, sometimes that first impression or that first big impression is what's important, but you know what the music means. Something about Mary gets our list for top Ben Stiller movie of all time. We will talk to you guys again next week when we talk about Chappelle Show skits. Remember? Week after that, November twenty third, holiday surprise, baby. What's Thanksgiving Clint, bringing you? Clint and then November thirtieth, five three one holiday comedies. So guys, we can later. Now to switch gears a little bit, Scott, you were involved with the Wrestle Rose podcast. Yeah, we've asked Mike how it came about, but can you tell us a little bit for those unfamiliar and give us your side of how the podcast kind of came together and where it is now? So, so Dan St. Germain had a podcast, Total F and Marks, and he had it for like a while. And then I was a guest on it a few times. And then it became weekly. And then it was just, hey, do you want to do this with me? So I did. And we were on ad free shows. For, no, not ad free shows at first. We were on All Things Comedy or whatever. And then. Uh, Great podcast network. Yeah, and then Conrad talked to us and was like, hey, what if you did a roast thing, you know, and then I'll put you on our network or whatever. And uh, 
we were like, all right, whatever. We'll call it Wrestle Roast. We got Robert Karpolis, uh involved. He's uh, WWE creative ish on Twitter, which is like a super funny account, especially if you're watching Raw or something. It's like just genuinely funny comments on the show uh, throughout the night. And so we got him on board, and, and and he also is a former writer for the WWE. So he has, like, really great insight, and he just thinks, like, more technical than us in a business way that is super important because it is a business. Uh, so then we got together with him, so we're just being stupid about wrestling. He adds, like, an element of actual legitimacy to it. And then mm. Lawrence got involved, too, the way I got involved with Dan, where he came on as a guest a bunch, then he was just whatever, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, now we just every week we – uh. We roast wrestlers and talk about the week in wrestling, mostly AEW, uh, which isn't on us. It's really on WWE. They, you know, unless we're shitting on like a, a terrible decision they made, it rarely comes up. Um, and yeah, I don't know, that, that's how it happened. You know, yeah, if, you, if anybody hasn't checked out Wrestle Roast, these guys are hilarious. Just this week. Scott, your opening joke. I was editing while I was listening. I laughed out loud. I was like, "Jeez." Oh, thanks, man. When did you realize you had a knack for roast jokes? Uh, who? Okay, so this. Oh no! Oh wow! It involves Dan Saint Germain and Mike Lawrence. So Dan was releasing a album with Comedy Central, and he had a a roast like with the Deuses and stuff. This was before roast battles. Um, at the stand, which is a club in New York City, and like Comedy Central, all these people were there and stuff. And then, um, he had me on the dais, and I was like, I was the only person unknown on it, like, didn't have a credit. And it just so happened I ended up writing a good set, and it worked really well. And then I was like, Oh, I, I'm capable of that. And then, mm. like, a month after we did that, the stand started doing roast battles. And since they saw me do that, they just asked me to do the roast battles, and I would do them all the time. And, you know, I was good at them. I don't know how. It just kind of happened. I think it's like bullshit tricks. I'm never, like, impressed with roasts, you know? It, like, it's just you do, like, a math equation, you know? You go, like, okay, what do they look like? And then you start, like, you start, like, you start, like, um, like, instead of going, like, oh, he's fat, you go, like, wide. Well, what is wide? And then you go, like, oh, this thing in life is wide. And then you find a way to connect it to that, you know? Like, I feel like I can hear it in your jokes some weeks where the guys will joke about telling their Scott joke of the week. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I love hearing everybody's Scott joke because it's like yeah. when that punchline hits, <laughs> that's my favorite part. Like, where is this going? Yeah. Am I lost in the maze? Boom. I'm laughing. And also, I'm like, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever written even a day before the show. I'm always writing just that day before, mm. like, during work. And then sometimes they'll be talking and we'll be, cause at first we compliment the wrestler and I'll be like slowly typing up my stuff in order because I didn't create an order. Cause I was just writing them as I was driving all day. Uh, so that could be like super nerve wracking. So, so when does your best inspiration hit you for joke writing? Is there a certain time or is it just kind of just when it pops in your mind? Just early in the morning. Uh, hmm. Just again, I think it's really because there's less distraction unless New Japan's on. Yeah. So and since there's no distraction, you just you start talking to yourself. That's all I do. I just I pretend I'm on a roll, and then I see what happens. You know, like I don't I don't go like, oh, what is? I don't go, oh, what what would I write? I go, you're performing this on stage, and it's already going well. And with that, you give yourself like a confidence boost. And then you just shit talk the person like out loud yeah. and then like jokes just start happening, you know? How how long were you um doing stand up before you started doing roast battles? Were you already pre seasoned or I mean it's uh, was I seasoned? Uh I guess I started doing battles when I was like twenty two and I started when I was seventeen. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah you I was, had, I was you doing had time though. Enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's its own thing entirely anyway. Like, there's people who are amazing at battles who can't do stand-up and mm. vice versa for sure. Like, yeah, very different things. Now, who were some of your favorite comics coming up? And did they influence your style? Or was it just more something you liked listening to? So, like, getting into stand-up and starting, it was... I When I started, I loved Louis C.K., mm. 
and I wanted to be Louis C.K., and I definitely sounded like Louis C.K., and I loved Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle, you know, the big guys, and Burr mm. and Patrice, like all the tough crowd guys. I really, I'm from Jersey, okay. and it's like that's very much a part of it uh, is, is that type of comedy. And so I loved all those guys. But even before that, it was like I loved Jim Carrey as a kid, which got me into In Living Color, which got me into stand-up. Like, I wanted to be a stand-up since I was seven, I think. Wow. Uh, and so were you, that, only, I, were you always that, writing jokes? I, I, in, yes, I think I heard something. I was curious if you think this too. Uh, I think it was uh, maybe Michael Jordan or somebody said that I wasn't better. I was just more obsessed with it. Like you just, you know, part of the success is being obsessed with this. And then, uh, I mean, I actually, I, I, I think a uh, detriment is I'm no longer as obsessed because, mm -hmm. because I did start so young. And so you get like jaded and you, you know, you're 20 and jaded. And what the fuck is that? Like that's, you know, <laughs> it's insane. Um, so, and also you, you see the thing with basketball and Michael Jordan saying that is in a sport is to be great at the sport. But mm. in comedy, if I go, well, I'm obsessed with comedy, it's like, well, that could be irrelevant. You know, it's also like the idea of being mm. forcing your way into a situation, like, there's, mm. you know, like buddying up to, you know, like you don't get into the NBA because, uh, because you, you know, you're got to be able to play fucking basketball, you know, and comedy necessarily isn't like that. So yeah, you can be obsessed with it, but you also have to be like obsessed with it in a healthy way mm. because you can be obsessed. Right, right. And so you got to like have your priorities straight and not be a psycho. And also a big part of comedy, be relatable. You got to be a human being. It's like, there's so many comics who like they'll call civilians like they're in the fucking military or something, you know? <laughs> and like, like, like this, I, I hear where it's like, oh, you know, oh, all my friends are comics. And so it's so hard to laugh at other people. And it's like, Everybody else is way funnier than comics. Comics are fucking losers for the most part, you know? But then you realize that, like, oh, these comedians, like, they're not funny. They're just joke writers. That's a lot of it, too, you know, where it's like, mm. I like back of the bus funny people. And, mm. and if you could write a joke, you know, again, like, there's a lot of Harvard graduates that are in writer's rooms because they figured out a way to write. There is a way. You could figure it out. I mean, there's comics I love. I love. And then I found out, like, they literally learned from joke books. Like it's possible. Like you can learn from a joke book. Anybody listening? <laughs> you really can. It's demented. Now, would you say that as a comic, you got to really learn to promote yourself and get out there well? Yeah. Another thing I'm terrible at. <laughs> I was just about to ask. Was yeah, there I don't do it at all. I don't, I don't think I've ever promoted the WrestleRoast podcast. Like I've never tweeted about it or I don't think well, so. I mean, that settles my next I would say, <laughs> like, you, you know, you, you do have to constantly post things. You, you know, somehow we've all woken up and like Instagram and, and TikTok, they are a part of our reality. It's no longer fakes. And so you have to present yourself, you know, like four times a day. Or are you doing mm. this? Uh, you know that's been the hardest thing we talk to other podcasters and i think the scariest thing is that everybody is learning as we go you know you ask other podcasters for advice and they're like look man nobody told me shit they're just like <laughs> this is what i've been doing and yeah. it's kind of common especially if you like if you love the idea of being funny and and funny it's that like tweeting and doing the, it's like it so goes against whatever that like uh being genuine because it, it it's such it, it is also a tool that is like hey c come get this thing you know uh it's almost like disrespectful to the the craft you know to just like throw out your dog shit observations because you have to yeah you know right. uh and so there is that battle and and yeah that that's every day i just i just stare at the wall going are you gonna post you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah and what post is going to connect with people you'll put out a post that five yeah. people like and then you'll put out some bullshit post that you could care less about and you're like how'd that get 200 likes oh like, yeah dude you say the dumbest thing. oh that's like the that's the biggest heartbreaker is like you know so if you're doing well on stage that's awesome but if you're doing poorly and it's not because you're sucking but it, and it'll get more likes than a, a well-crafted tweet or something if if i'm doing poorly, oh what are my three lamest jokes and i'll tell them and they'll do well 
You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm bombing, I go, oh, I know how to recover. Tell your worst stuff. <laughs> and then people love it. And you go, well, go fuck yourself. You know? what, what am I doing here? Who am I trying that to feel, feel good, though, like digging yourself out of a hole. But it's like digging yourself out of a hole with the worst shovel you own. Yeah. Exactly. Play Zone remake where they had the episode with Kamel Namjani as a comic. And no. it's like when he's doing the material that he likes on stage that he th where but then when he starts telling things from his life it's going over huge and then it's almost like it starts consuming him that he starts telling more of these things from his life and it's an episode you'd have to see because i've ever seen of theirs. and just oh, wow. i wanted to get a view from it. so i mean wait so what's the idea of the episode is that oh oh so he's bombing because he's trying to say important things but it turns out when he speaks about his life, it's way more relatable. That, that yeah, sure and he's happens. also realizing it's hurting the people oh, at dude. home. So it's this oh. fine line. Hmm. Well, I I, I was on uh, the Comedy Central roast battles. I think I was on two, right? And um, and one of them, uh, the battler made a joke about my sister that I said, "Hey, don't bring this." Up. Like we never do that. You know, you never go, mm. "Hey." Like it's always, you know, and so yeah. the comic told me, Hey, maybe don't say this. Don't say that. I go, dude, of course, you know? And then I said, Hey, don't bring this up about this person. I think I already said it was my sister, but anyway, she called me fucking crying after it aired and stuff. And that was mm. a lot of that. Uh, I mean, I don't Ugh. do roast battles anymore. And part of it is like, I got, I got a girlfriend. She has a kid. Like, I don't want to stand there and hear some fucking random guy make the joke and then they're going to post it on YouTube where, mm. you know, no one's going to even mm. watch it except about, which is insane, you know? So yeah, there's, you definitely got to be smarter, but in terms of myself uh, and my experiences, like, yeah, fair game. I'll talk about anything, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mike Lawrence about just doing roast. And he said with the autism diagnosis that he just almost doesn't have like the emotion to process it. Yeah. And that's why he yeah. thinks he's the best at it. That's and hilarious. I told Dave, I couldn't remember 100%, and I was hesitant to bring it up May, like, fresh off his divorce. Yeah, he did, man. He was the one who knew – he nuked Ralphie, and uh, I believe that really affected Ralphie, I think. Mm. I think he was pissed. Yeah, and it was intense, but, like, when you hit, yeah, but then you almost him, forget about the person behind it. Sure, 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 yeah. Um, at the same time, I, you know, Ralphie went in there like he shouldn't have done that show. You know, he just showed up coming back to me. Like, I remember Ralphie not giving a shit there at all. And then just being like, so Ralphie was bummed, said anything terrible because Ralphie's jokes literally weren't hitting, you know? And then Mike comes out with like not only funny jokes, which mm. Ralphie wasn't doing, but cutting jokes. So it's like, you, and you're. French.